Okay, hey, uh, this is day two, making a cylinder pattern, and um, I'll tell you, just before I start, I just want to tell you that doing wood on an engine lathe is like one of the worst things you can possibly do. Uh, wood lathe is for wood, a metal lathe is for metal, and here, here's the issue. It's not really designed for doing wood. Wood, the chips and the fine chips and all get under there. And um, so now when I'm all done, I'm doing all my wood, everything I got to do. I only have one lathe. If I had more room, I'd have a wood lathe, and I would use that for just all my pattern work. But I don't have one. I only have one lathe. Or if I had an older uh, engine lathe, at one shop I did, I had an old uh, engine lathe with the old, just the, the uh, legs on each end, and it was a belt-driven one. That, that would work great. But I only have this one, and it's a very good lathe. It's accurate. I've had it since 1981, so it's what, 20, 35 years old, something like that. And I had, I had uh, never had a problem with it. It's always accurate. But you can't really do um, woodworking on an engine lathe. It's not a good move. Secondly, with the repro that I used, the plastic, that's even worse because it's such a fine dust that it uh, uh, gets in all of the ways and everything. So now when I'm all done here and I do all the pieces I'm going to do on the lathe, uh, then I'm going to clean everything and wash it all down and clean everything, but uh, uh, it's really not a good move. Now, we're, now I'm working on, I don't want to put any oil on it because that would be worse. Now, I'm working on these um, blocks and I have a cross in the middle here, cross in the middle, and I just took a, a center punch and just lightly punched a little bit of a mark in there. Now, why that? Well, because I'm going to use what's called a wiggler. Now, this is spring-loaded. Okay, and I'm going to put that in the center like that, and put this in the center over here. And as this is going around, it's going to kind of do like that, see? And I put the indicator here, and I keep indicating until it's just right. you got to indicate the face, then you indicate this, indicate the face, and then until you get it just right. Now, it doesn't matter that much that it would be perfect, but um, we're going to try to do the best we can with it. So, keeping that in mind, we're going to um, move the tailstock over, take the... I've had this cover on there. Uh, you've heard me mention Irv Leibowitz. Well, Irv Leibowitz made one of these, and I copied what he had. And uh, I've had this thing whew, since I worked at D-Lavel. Okay, now, like my aunt used to call it, D-Lavel. So I call it D-Lavel. It's D-Laval. D-Laval Turbine Company. Okay, we're putting it. Now I have one inch. This is a one inch travel indicator. All right, it's a very good indicator. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a an a, 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 a it's a Ames. Yeah, I thought it was an Ames. That's a good one. And I also have the Starrett one that I got. It's a one inch tra one inch travel as well, but it's a bigger face. So I use both of them. This one here, I don't like this stand, but I'm using it. This. This extra piece gets in the way. Eventually, someday I'll fix it. And you put this up here like this, and you, you spin it. You see, it's just wobbling around. Okay, so figure out which way it's wobbling. It's further away that way, so that means that this jaw gets loosened. You come around the opposite way and push it in. Okay, now you just take it. It's a little bit less now. See? Okay, now. Right, it's deep between these two, so you, you loosen that one a little bit, come around to the other side, tighten that one, come back to this one, loosen it up, and come back to this. Now look, you could you could, look, <laughs> it's way off again. So you could you could um, the only way you're going to get this is to practice, practice, practice. It takes a lot of practice to do this. I've been doing this for 50 years, and. Uh, it just takes practice. Okay, so now, let's see. All right, it's right here. Loosen, tighten. Now, I have a good chuck. Back to De La Val again. We had these chucks that were used during a World War II, and the jaws are all from somebody just tightening them with a big, long pipe like that, tighten it up, and the jaws get sprung. So every time you try to uh, tighten some up, the jaws chop, boom, boom, bam, boom. And uh, this chuck doesn't do this. This is the original chuck that came with the machine. And I don't abuse it. I don't use any of my tools. It just, uh, those guys didn't seem to care. So, you know, so, so many people worked on those machines, they didn't seem to care. They had, 
different guys all over the place. Okay, now this is loosened and tightened. Okay, now I'm going to push that in a little bit more so I get the full travel. So now the, the indicator is traveling to full travel. All right, now you, I know you can't see it, but look. You got one more comment about, we can't see what you're doing. Those people, save your money and send me $1,000 and I'll get another one of these beautiful cameras and we'll put it right up over here, over the top, like they do in a cooking show. Until such time as I get more money to buy another camera or use one or something, this is what you got to have to put up with. Just use your imagination. And you just keep doing this until you bring it in. Now it's, it's away. Now I have it just chucked on about a quarter of an inch here. Because I'm going to turn up to those jaws. As far as I can do it. Then eventually I'm going to turn these around in a three jaw chuck. We'll talk about later. And then I'm going to do the other side. Now this is poplar. And you just keep working it until you get it right. You don't you can't push it too much because it's wood. And it's starting to come in now. It's starting to come in. That yeah, just released. Come back. Tighten. Release. Touch it. Come back. Just just Loosen it up, you see the indicator move, and just, just kiss it a little bit. And come back on the other side, tighten that one up, and just keep pushing it, see. I mean, there's a hundred ways to do it, but that's the way I do it. Just keep working it like that, back and forth, each draw. Now, Irv taught me, he said, well, re-indicate the face. I do that, I have a little bit different method, I do that until I get it somewhere near, then I indicate the face, because... The face is doing this, it's also making the center go out. So you get it somewhere near. Loosen, tighten. Loosen. If you, if, you, if you loosen it too much, it'll fall out. Loosen, tighten. Loosen, tighten. Just keep doing that, it'll come in. 20,000, it's okay. So gonna do you're gonna take the good old hammer and you want to make one of these I made this one years ago I got several of them and uh, brass on the front you keep beating it and work hardens is just as hard if not harder than steel it's a plastic uh, thing you buy you can buy them from Stanley or you can just buy the hammer already done okay now I'm watching this that's going in there out here okay it's out there so I'll hit it there it's tapping you gotta remember it's wood, so don't rat hit it too hard. All right, right here, right on that jaw. And I'm within ten thousandths now. All right, another wrap right there. Now it's about ten thousandths. That's good enough for it. it's only a casting. It's only a, be a pattern. And that's why I like to have two two of these set up because then you can just go. I only got one right now. All right, that's seven thousands. It's wood. Leave it a big. Okay. Now you're done with this. Put it back. Always remember to put the little thing on that I've had for all these years. Put that over here for now. All right, now we're going to turn it on. I got to go turn the three phase on. It's over there. I don't like those convert. I don't like those. Um, what are they called? Uh, very VFDs. I don't care for them. I have one on my milling machine. I got another milling machine now. We're reconditioning. It's a uh, variable speed. I'm going back to the three phase. I hate that thing. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to run this. And uh, that's pretty good. All right. Now I gotta. This is the worst thing you do. Is you very lightly with the air. Just very lightly. Because you blow it right underneath. With the metal, it's different. You shouldn't use air in a machine, but everybody does. So get, get over it. Right, I'm just gonna. I usually keep this at a 
Remember what I said in the other video? Uh, they stopped at 45, which is right there. Now, 30, 30, um, 29 and a half, they never put a mark for that, for doing threading. So I guess the Chinese don't use it for threading. But I have a mark. I made it years ago. I made a mark there. I always keep it there. Irv, because you're ready for threading, Irv always said keep it there. I don't know what Irv's doing. Last I heard, he was still living. But I don't know. that He, he was the same age as my mother, just a few... Uh, just a few, that's my white balance, a few years um, difference. And uh, I just set this up and we'll get the proper tool, which is this one. Like that, I angle it. Well, I'll keep it straight because then you, you never know that I might need it for doing something straight. I just eyeball. I usually eyeball it along to tighten it up. You don't have to over tighten it. Always. Yeah, the safety conscious guys. Yeah, I am safety. Look. Hey, get down low like this and pull so you don't hurt your back. I'm a short guy. Some of them guys we used to have six foot something. They used to hurt their backs all the time. Okay, now. Uh, let's see. We're going to put this in gear. 500 RPMs. There we go. Now, I'm going to start turning this. It's going to fly all over the place. Right up to the jaws. Oh, now I gotta turn that a little bit more, it's hitting. No, just that, you know, I'm safety conscious. There's some of these guys out there that write me, they watch my videos, and then all of a sudden they're telling me, yeah, look at the mess it's making there. I gotta use, you know, because. Yeah, it's better. I have a mark. We'll take a real light cut at the end. And see it's fuzzing it all up. So we'll have to just take a real light cut and see what happens. Yeah, I should use a certain kind of tool with a nice rake on all that. That's all nonsense. We'll just, we'll get it. You can do all that. I don't do enough of it to worry about it. All right, where's my little things? We're gonna make it, gonna make it um, the same as the uh, same as the the cylinders we made, which is three and three sixteenths. And right now it's three and a half. So once we get that far, I'm gonna put a mark on a on a one here on the on the zero here. I'm gonna go real slow. See if I can get a finish. Set it, throw that down. Okay, not bad. A little sandpaper will take care of it. Just remember what I said, push it across, that's all. Scale size, though, you know what? The guys at DLL, the old timers, they didn't have any dials on the machines. We had uh, some of them old timers were still around when I was there, 1970 something. But, um, another cut. Now we got to put a taper on this. So we'll get down there and then we're going to taper it. Forgot about that. We got to taper it. Let's see what that is. We'll get down within a sixteenth and we can put the taper on it. It doesn't matter. We can make this, we can make these uh, three and a quarter to make sure. Because the guys are going to chuck these up. You got to, I got to remember the 040 is a, a beginner's kit. And um, I want to try to give them a little bit more, a little bit more material on there, a little extra meat on the, on the castings so they could um, uh, have a chance to get it right.
I think what I would do is just, I'm going to end it right there because this particular one has a step in it, you'll see it in a minute. And then this is the one that has the two little ears on it to hold the crosshead guides. So we're, the, the plan calls it for it to have a quarter of an inch back down to about two inches, which I'll do that on the powder here and then I'll taper that. Then later on, we're going to hold that out here and I'm going to turn the other side, face it down, get it a little thinner. And um, uh, I could have made this out of aluminum, but wood's all right, which is as easy. Okay, now, um, let me just check the print here. All right, let me see what we got here. Huh, brings it almost up to there, so you know what? I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to turn it and... Uh, I'm going to turn it sh straight with a little bit of a taper to it. I got to go all the way down almost. I'm going to use the readout. Get the three, a little bit under three eighths, about three fifty. Three eighths is the eight, three seventy five. That means twenty thousand left or so. It's got to be two inches. Well, actually, well, two and three quarters. Maybe that's bigger than two inches. Let me just check that now. I think it's two and a quarter. Two and three eighths. So, what is it now? Two and a half. So, an eighth of an inch. That's 70,000 right there. For those who are safety conscious, when I got the chuck on, I do it this way, okay? And you got to make sure that the end of this is out past the jaw, because if it hits, it's going to go like this. And always do it with a handle on it. Guys, I think I've been doing this for years. I know what I'm doing. Because it'll go right through your hand without the handle. Okay, that's safety. Get some of the nubbies off it. A little bit. I want to take the marks off. Okay, now that OD there is that's just a telltale, so when I turn it around, okay, that's it. Take it out. Now, because I didn't take the effort to make each block identical, what's going to happen is each block is going to be, I had to re indicate it, but that's okay. I don't feel like doing it. Sometimes you just don't. Okay, now, all right, here it is. Later on, you have to sand it by hand. No big deal. Just sand it. Sand it by hand. Fill it. Whatever you got to do. All right. There it is. It's all centered. You notice it? Doesn't matter because it turned it. Now, I'm going to turn this 